Aloha. Uh, in this video, I wanted to uh, jump off the last video, or the video before last, and a little bit of the last video too, but really uh, take it a step even further into from the belief systems to the alchemy of those belief systems and how they are engaged in our reality, like one by one, we can see particular belief systems, but piecing them all together, we can see this as an alchemy. And when I use the term alchemy, I use it to explain the difference between like a, a linear interpretation and a nonlinear uh, interpretation. Uh, and, and, and for example, like the difference between an ingredient in an entire meal or like if you're baking something the entire process of the heat heating up the elements the uh, mixing of the ingredients the time that needs to be making those ingredients you know in the oven or, or mixing it together and then also the the way that the individual Taste like the different layers of taste that they're getting when they when the finished product is complete. Like all of that, the 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 history that goes into the the menu itself, the history that goes into the various ingredients of whatever it is that you're piecing together, along with the aftermath, like how it makes somebody feel, like what the intention is. That's that's how I explain or define what an alchemy is. It's basically the balance between real science, true science, and the spirit. So it's the experience and the nuts and bolts of that experience. So the science is built up of a, of a lot of linear interpretations or ingredients along with the, the process, uh, the, the right hemisphere of, you know, the magic that puts it together. So it's basically like real science and real magic, but it's the magic of your existence, like your soul. So that's what I mean when, for people who don't really know what I'm talking about when I say, or completely know what I'm talking about when I say alchemy. Um, that's where I'm coming from because the alchemy of the, the system is to keep you linear, keep you on the left hemisphere, keep you in the patriarchal programming of this is the only way that you need to be, whether you're locked into a mind control program of fear or a mind control program of um, emotional body, a mind control program of escapism or whatever it is. It's a linear process to where you're not even allowed to tune into the nonlinear interpretation of your reality. You're, you don't even know what that is. Because we pretty much turn that hemisphere off. We we don't we don't acknowledge the the balances of nature. We live at the expense of the balances of nature. This is what a parasite does. This is what I was mentioning in the video before last. The parasitic consciousness living off of the host. The host can be seen as you know, earth or the host could be seen as the spirit of an individual. Either way, you can understand what I'm talking about when I say that the entire system is leeching off of the individuals or you can narrow it down to a person leeching off of another person in an abusive relationship. This is the same thing that happens. It's a, it's a microcosm of the macrocosm. And as long as you keep focusing on the, the linear back and forth of the abusive relationship and don't really empower yourself, you're going to be locking yourself into some version of escapism. So in, in reference to an re, abusive relationship, a form of escapism is the style of, or, or the, the Stockholm Syndrome. So an individual... Um, is subjected to abuse for so long that they start to love their situation. They start to love their abuser because that feels better than being in an abusive relationship. So they start to 
rationalize their experience. This is what your politics is. This is what your um, Western so-called civilization is. This is what Hollywood is. Besides being a distraction, you love this shit. This is what technology is. This is what all of these things are that surround us and fill ourselves with pride because of you know how we've been locked into believing that the moment that we exist in right now is the evolutionary peak of our existence from monkey evolution from the big bang from you know coming from microbes to fish to dinosaurs to monkeys to you or to cavemen then to you and then a um a transhumanism version of you, like you having a, an iPhone or something like that. Like this is, this is the process that's going on, and it's a very simplistic style. It's a, it's a, like I was explaining to a friend the other day, and like I explained in the other video. They don't really the so-called they the system itself doesn't have to show its cards. It doesn't really have to make any moves if it's locked you into a belief system that makes you think that it made those moves. So as long as they are locking you into a belief system that says that they are the all-powerful evolutionary peak of this experience and they can control whatever they want, they deserve what they got based upon how they got it. So you're enabling this destructive intelligence when you enable this system. An example is the system takes pride in the genocide. It takes pride in the destruction that it takes pride in stepping on people's throats to get where it got today. If it didn't take pride in stepping on the throats of the Native Americans, destroying the indigenous people and the land, slaughtering, poisoning, installing diseases and cancer, into not only the physical body, but the psychological bodies and the spiritual bodies of people, masses of people across the earth plane. If they didn't take pride in that, then they wouldn't have be, be able to convince you to take pride in it. So it's it's not only taking pride, but it's also deflecting and distracting you away from the deeper layers of interpreting this reality. One example of that is the perspective of Alex Jones. So Alex Jones has this perspective, and he's a very complex system that's out there. He's out there to set not only set this tone of a limited foundation of this whole forefathers and Donald Trump mentality, but he's also out there to install these programs of uh, the so-called future. And you can read the Bible. It's hiding in plain view, folks. It's not of this world. I don't know exactly what it is or what it's doing, but this is not human intelligence, okay? It's not human intelligence we're facing. I refuse to fight with everybody. All the stupid racist white people, the stupid racist black people, all the stupid racist Mexicans, all of you. I can't stand you. You're idiots. We're under attack. Everybody's under attack. The elite hate Trump. Let me tell you, if he is a psyop, he's the most sophisticated one I ever saw. And even if he is, he's a revelation of the awakening, and they're having to pull this trick to try to divert us. Doesn't matter. It's part of the awakening. Humanity has got to get off world. We, have, we, we need access to the life extension technologies. Talk about discrimination. Forget skin color. I want the advanced life extension. I want to go to space. I want to see interdimensional travel. I want what God promised us, and I won't sit here and watch Satan steal it. That's the fight. That's the key. That's everything. So as long as you're locked into his belief systems, because he's out there, he's basically like a celebrity. He's a superhero. He's a voice of, quote unquote, reason. He's a voice of the people. He's a whatever it is. He's another voice out there in a world that doesn't have many voices. And the reasons why, one of the main reasons why they don't have many voices is because 
if you have too many voices out there, you make the system vulnerable, just like for an individual, like Obama, like I said in the video before last. Obama can't get out there and start, you know, talking about stuff. You get Just imagine if he got on the microphone every day and started talking about stuff. You know how much information you would have on that individual? He would lose his superhero costume because he would reveal himself. Just imagine if Barack Obama had a talk show. You would be able to see where he's coming from. You would be able to see his limitations. You will be able to see he will inherently expose himself. So they have to remain silent. So you believe in the superhero, the secret superhero. And that allows you to escape in the fairyland of your superheroes who will save the day eventually, you know, when that whenever, whenever that time may be. So as long as they don't say anything. They get to steal your time through you living through your belief systems and your trust in whoever it is that they put out there in front of you, these puppets. So when they when Barack Obama was running his campaign, that was the basic premise. It was the whole we are changed, this whole we thing. We believe we this, we that. It it was it was not based upon you it was based upon your belief system and your belief in the system that this is changed just because it looks this way what began as a whisper in springfield has swelled to a chorus of millions calling for change it's a chorus that cannot be ignored a chorus that cannot be deterred this time can be different because this campaign for the presidency of the United States of America is different. not because of me. It's different because of you. Change will not come if we wait for some other person or if we wait for some other time. We are the ones we've been waiting for. Something happened over the last several weeks, over the past several months. We know that what began as a whisper has now swelled to a chorus that cannot be ignored, that will not be deterred, that will ring out across this land as a hymn that will heal this nation, repair this world, make this time different than all the rest. Yes, we can. Yes, we can. Yes, we can. So you can see how the the alchemy of that construct, that puppet that is Barack Obama, is set up on this pedestal as a representative of change, as a representative of belief, as a representative of forward progress, just by him being somebody different. Like you can see that like this is not what <laughs> that's that's not anything real. There's not there's no essence there. It's another version of escapism. So people who are believing in Alex Jones are locking themselves into their fear programs and being happy that Alex Jones is out there. And they don't want to go into the information because they've empowered him, just like people empower Obama. They've empowered him to do the work for you. So you, this is a version of this whole conspiracy theory escapism. So you have, and I'm going to go through all these version of, versions of escapism as I go, obviously, from the title. But um, 
starting with Alex Jones, that's a version of escapism. You have people going in, you know, just downloading all of this information and getting all this information, but it's not active. It's They're not doing anything with it. So it's like I said in the beginning with, about the alchemy. You can have all the ingredients of the in the world, but if you don't have an oven, if you don't have the power to turn on that oven, if you don't have the fire is a better example. If you don't have the fire to bake, if you don't have those the um, the ingredients, if you don't have the what is the term for that? I can't even think of that. Uh, the measurements of those ingredients, like how it's all mixed up. If you don't have all of that stuff and you don't know like what it is that you're making, you, you don't know where to put it. You're basically consuming yourself with these linear par- these, these linear programs that is another form of escapism. So you're surrounded yourself by information, but it's it's got dust on it. It's like living in a in a library. You bought all the books, but you haven't really read them to understand them and do anything about it. So you stay in the library. You don't do anything. You don't leave the library. So you become a relic within the library over time. And that's what it all always boils down to is the the essence of time, stealing your time. So since the level of consciousness is expanding and the parasitic consciousness needs to expand itself based upon the level of consciousness of the people, what it has done is made available all of this information and all these various outlets that are out there to keep you in a version of expanding your consciousness by consuming yourself with information, linear terms. And consuming yourself with linear belief systems or linear communities or linear ideas of what's going on. But it's not active. There's there's no activation there. So largely a lot of it's not active because there's so much fear that's still there. There's so many gaps in the systems. There's so little trust in the people that represent these communities. There's so little trust in yourself because you haven't gotten all of the pieces that really allow you to feel confident enough to work with that fire, largely because most of your peers around you are consuming themselves with escaping through social media, through food, through drugs, through whatever it is. The The consumption world is the world that is the norm. So as long as they can maintain the control of the norm, the social norm, which is why the mainstream is out there and so on and so forth, they don't really have to make any moves because they make the moves based upon your belief systems. So it's like I said in the video before last, it's just like betting around the table in the World Series of Poker and they just keep betting and filling the pot over and over and over again, knowing that they're bluffing. They have a bluff. And since you've been, you know, so locked into their, the, the power that they've told you that they have through the, through the Hollywood movies, through the politics, they scare you with, you know, we're going to bomb with nuclear warfare, we're going to do this, we're going to do that, geostorm. They build, they've, they've built up that bluff for so long that basically, They've bluffed you into submission. And you're the one that that's actually holding the full house. You are the full house. But since you've bought into their world and everything that is in your world and largely for a lot of people these days, a lot of what you think you are is based upon the genocidal, destructive, parasitic consciousness world that they have built up around you. This is why people are, you know, um, priding themselves in their car, priding themselves in their job, priding themselves in their phone. And this is why people will buy a phone 
that's no different than the phone that they had before. It's just a different app or something. Or, you know, instead of one camera, it's two cameras. And, you know, like whatever. As if they didn't plan all this stuff. So that mentality has been planned out for so long. And what it boils down to is you never really making any moves because you're not empowering yourself enough to understand the ground that you're standing on in order to make some moves. This is what I said, and people say, well, what moves should we make? And I'm just like, first of all, understand the ground that you're standing on. Understand that you are in uh, a chess game. Understand the rules of this chess game and how the rules of this chess game have been broken. Understand the pieces on the board. Once you understand all of these parts of this system, the so-called solutions will reveal themselves naturally. And it's going to happen because there's there's two things that happen. This happens individually and then inherently it happens collectively. And that's the shift of the con consciousness of the masses of people that is a reflection of the individuals. This is why I said it's so important to also focus on your inner work. Your inner work is the reflection. It will be it's the bridge between uh, your spiritual work and your physical work. If, as long as you are doing that, and this is why the New Age community is so impactful in many ways in this whole escapism world, because what it does is it focuses only on the linear world at the or the the uh, the inner linear world, uh, not the inner world. It's the inner linear world because the inner world is including the spirit or the soul and the body that's the true balance of the inner world but the inner linear world or the linear linear inner world is focusing only on your concepts that you have used as a form of escapism no different than the concepts that are used in politics and um conspiracy theory or even flat earth you know communities and all this other stuff these are forms uh what happens when you get into the new age community is the same thing that happens when you start researching information like Ale about alex jones and the same thing that happens when you start researching and lock yourself into the idea of the flat earth community the mainstream flat earth community is that you consume yourself with ideas ingredients and you don't really do too much with it it's just you take pride in a sense and you wait because you're powerless you're still hopeless you just wait for the system to do whatever it's going to do in new age mentality you actually just rationalize and create prescription drugs of understandings of what's really going on here such as like oh well um, we're all one. Everything is on purpose. The people who are experiencing the 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 tragedies of the world is be that's because of their karma. It has nothing to do with you. You just need to focus on yourself. It's just the I am presence, and you know, focus on the aliens and the extraterrestrials. To boot, that's the religious, the dogmatic part that comes in. No different than you know, Christianity. You know, waiting for a literal Jesus to come down and save the day. The new age paradigm is waiting for uh, these literal extraterrestrials and aliens to come down and save the day. And if you're still locked into that perspective, I don't really know how to say it any more than <laughs> I, I said it so many in so many ways in different videos. But you have to understand something like ancient aliens on the History Channel, you know, sitting next to CNN, MSNBC, Fox News, um, and all the other mind control programs that are on the mainstream media, that is a mind control program. You already have an idea of the alien agenda. You already are getting seeded this whole Anunnaki story, 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 story Planet X, the Sumerian past history of humanity, the whole slave mentality. It's another slave mentality. As long as they create this idea of who and what you are that is empty, helpless, broken, based on a slave, 
then what's the difference then telling you that you know we brought you across the across the the waters um the ocean as a slave and the only reason why you're in the americas is because we brought you here so boom you're an african american shut your mouth follow the rules of the free world be thankful that we enslaved you and that's it that's your history when we are revealing and understanding now that the melanated people were all across the world to begin with before anybody made any moves in this whole so-called western civilization these are the stories that are being held back from people in order to maintain that limited form of understanding your history, that limited form of understanding your foundations. Because if you have no solid foundations, you can't make any moves. You can't start, start any fires. You can't, you can't, um, uh, you can't really do anything that will make any kind of real effective change in reference to the system because you're still using the tools of the system you're still locked in the box of the system you're still on their foundation until we break and burn their foundation nothing will really change so an example of that is like p voting in politics as long as you're locking yourself into that's the only thing that needs to change as long as you're in that reactionary state of being nothing's actually going to change that's the time stealing mechanism so these belief systems exist to steal your time these lack of empowerment programs this lack of lack of foundations exist to steal your time it's based upon the level of con if they're stealing your time they're stealing the expansion of your consciousness, the potential of the expansion of your consciousness. So this is where the whole alchemy of escapism comes in. So people escape in the the Hollywood activists that exist out there, like Ashley Judd, uh, Rosario Dawson, and um, what is that from? What was that movie where? I don't know, one of those other actors, it was kind of like a Hunger Games movie. They turned it into an, anyway, whatever it is. Another one of these actors that are out there, these young actors, that whoever it is, it's just basically activist, period. They control your, what is meaningful. So if they have you buying the same kind of shoes that they have the same dresses and suits that they have then you also inherently buy into their belief systems because you love them like superheroes like a kid wants to dress up like um superman or something or uh the Fonz from Happy Days. Like, I wanted that jacket. Like, <laughs> that's how that's how deeply it went into my into my programming. Like, I, I wrapped a towel around my neck and I was jumping off the couch. Like, these are what these are what these uh, these Hollywood people are. This is what Barack Obama, the politicians are. This is what Alex Jones is and TYT and Bernie Sanders. They're just no, another version, uh, another version of superhero for you to vest your energy in them saving the day so you really don't know, do anything because it's not your responsibility you don't have any money you don't have any power you don't have any intelligence you leave that up to the people who have that money who have that intelligence who have that power and you just need to take care of your responsibilities in your day-to-day -day, and then that's it and that's where people will stay. That's the alchemy of that bluff system and that escapism system. See, this is why you're consumed with, uh, like in the movie They Live, you're consumed with the perspective of marriage and reproduction. So as long as you're locked into that mentality, you're not really going to do anything. So you're surrounded in every day, everywhere you look.
Everywhere you look, you're surrounded by subconscious and conscious mind control programs that add to your escapism, that add to time stealing, that add to your lack of empowerment, the dormancy of your soul, your mind, and your body, and the work that needs to be done, uh, the complacency of your experience overall, the apathy. See, the perspectives of Donald Trump in Make America Great Again and Alex Jones in this whole idea of, you know, this is <laughs> this is what we're we're going to do. They all exist to create a foundation that inherently installs a limitation. It installs an escapism. It installs a powerless movement. So. This is what happens. A, a, a prime example of that, a powerless movement, is something like the New Age movement. So as long as the New Age community stays separate from the mainstream environment, no different than the flat earth being co-opted, people will buy into it simply because it's fringe. They believe it even more because the mainstream is not talking about this information. But they have seeded this information into the mainstream reality with ancient aliens and TV shows that are on like Destination America where they talk about alien uh, abductions and Sasquatch videos and ghost hunters and all this other stuff. And then they have people like Joe Rogan who talk about this stuff very passionately. Oh, I believe in this. I believe in, oh, I don't believe in this. Your beliefs are created for you. And not everybody is going to listen to everything. It's just kind of like a Facebook feed. You only get certain amount of information. But ultimately, the algorithm is designed by Facebook to make you see certain things, to make you see th certain things at certain times. They release these things at certain times, just like false flags get released at certain times. And a lot of that false flag stuff happens to reset the momentum of your consciousness. What happens is your emotional body gets triggered when something like Las Vegas goes down, when something like 9-11 goes down. What happens is all the work that you have done to recalibrate your focus, your belief systems, and get rid of all the, the garbage and nonsense that has been caked on by your mind controllers and the system itself, all of that stuff is vulnerable. So this is how the so-called powers that be Make their moves, but really don't make any moves. They make moves based upon your belief systems, your emotional body. So this is how they can make incremental moves in the politics, in the whole bureaucracy of it all, by making you so-called vote on it. You're welcoming this shit into your reality. So a lot of the time frames that are chosen for these false flags is based upon, like I said, it's always going to be based upon the level of consciousness of the people and the level of exposure of the system. It goes hand in hand. So the level of consciousness of the people is going to be also including how exposed the system is. And based upon those two things going on the system says we need to do this now we need to do we need to release this technology now we need to release this movie right now we need to release this series of movies at this time frame during the summer months we need to release these movies during and around this false flag event we need to release these movies hence geostorm and all the other 
all the other conspiracy stories that are out there that are in and around um, geoengineering and all the uh, all the the events like Hurricane Harvey and her, all these other hurricanes that are out there, they play off of this because what it does is like I explained when I was talking about Geostorm, it builds them up. It builds up their bluff. It builds up their stature. So if they're bluffing about having a full house and then they release a, a, a hurricane or a series of hurricanes and then they release a movie that shows you the technology that they could possibly have or are going to have. Because in that movie, they say this is what we're going to have in 2019. That's two years from now. So if they have it two years from now, they basically already have it in your head. So if they do these geoengineering, if they release this information, you know, very slyly in these little um, Facebook feeds and Instagram posts and memes and they actually have cloud making machines with NASA. They do all this stuff. They don't really have to have everything that they're showing in like the movie Geostorm because they just need to, you to believe that they have that. The same thing with like the nuclear weapon mechanism. That whole mentality of nuclear warfare, it builds up the power in your head. They could do this. But when you research what's really what really happened in Hiroshima and Nagasaki and all these nuclear tests, you start to ask questions. Why are they faking a lot of this stuff? Why is a lot of this stuff, you know, existing this way? So this is this is the alchemy of the bluff belief system. And this, like I said in the previous video or video before last, there's. This is not to say that this system doesn't, you know, have a certain amount of, you know, uh, power or weapons or something like this. This is just to say that this alchemy exists. This is the style of the alchemy itself. This is actually more power. Your belief systems are more powerful than any weapon that they can claim to have. Your belief systems, your belief in this system is more powerful, is more of a threat to humanity than any weapon that this system claims to have. And that is the weapon that is being utilized in every moment of every day when you consume yourself with <laughs> you escapism. I'm sorry if my complicated life is an inconvenience to your perfect existence. Cindy, Cindy. It's easy to run away, and this is this is like um, taking the the dream world and putting it into the real world. When you're faced with a demon in a nightmare as a child, and you don't know any any you don't have any anchors or foundations of what to do with that because you're you're a child. You see yourself as a child in those dreams and a child that's testing yourself. Are you going to see yourself as a child or are you going to experience that reality as the soul? This is why um, a lot of people say that and there have been experiments that have been done. I can't remember the term that was referenced of. Uh, oh, Alan Watts referenced this, the, the oceanic feeling of a child knowing itself. It knows who it is. It knows what it is. A baby knows what it is. But science can't understand that. But when you start locking yourself into the ABCs, the one, two, threes, and the colors and the blocks of this reality, you're also locking yourself into the idea of you, who you are. And you yourself are, you know, a two or three, four or five year old child that is powerless. The only power that you have is from your parents. You're completely vulnerable. So when you're in your dream space, you convince yourself that that's who you are. Whereas before, when you were a baby, you had no frame of reference other than your soul. You were anchored in your soul perspective. So you are actually 
facing a lot of these demons. And then this is where these nightmares come when you start to get older. When you're like two, three, four, and five, that's where the nightmares come in because you're no longer anchored in your soul empowered space. You're now anchored in the idea of yourself, which is your two, three, four, and five year old body that's completely vulnerable. And when you're by yourself in your dream space, that's when the demons can come in, scare the shit out of you, and chase you away. So, this is what this system does. This system utilizes that mentality that has been indoctrinated into you from K through 12, even pre K through 12, but through K through 12, you've been locked into the conformity, the authority, the indoctrination, the conditioning, the alchemy of separating you from your, uh, your soul so that you become, become vulnerable and codependent on the system. So the same thing that happens to you in your dreams when you lock yourself into the vulnerability of only being able to rely on your parents, running away from demons and nightmares, the same thing happens over time, K through 12, when now you are by yourself in school. So your parents are the system itself. The system is your safety net. The system is your provider. It's your protector. But the system itself is corrupt. It's broken. It's not at all powerful. It's dead. It's inherently weak and doesn't give a shit about you. And it's based upon all these lies, genocide, destruction, massacres, apathy, and all of that Mind control programming exists through first, second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth grade, all the way up to high school. You're just locking in all of this emptiness. You're locking that parasite into your reality over time. And you have all this subconscious vulnerability to where you don't even dream anymore. You don't even allow yourself to, to remember. You dream, but you don't allow yourself to remember your dreams because... You're so locked into the physical reality and the parasitic consciousness of this physical reality that the only thing that you can do to maintain and even kill in this experience is to just stay afloat. Keep your head above the water. This is what the nine to five is. This is what, you know, having a bunch of friends are. This is what social media is. It's like maintain a social media presence, maintain, you know, your uh, maintain the the system version of yourself because if you lose that then you're going to lose everything that you are which is actually what you think you are so this is how the alchemy of who and what you are from a soul perspective gets sucked out of your reality and then you go through the rest of your life living in escapism so the marriage and reproduction program is a form of escapism. Um, the fiat currency system sets up the need, the inherent need for escapism. It's the only thing a lot of the ways. Like uh, people growing up in the inner cities who don't have any you know, money and resources. They've been chatteled into this like what redlining did. It chattels you into a lack of options so you have the options of selling drugs resorting to crime or joining the military that's pretty much the the small option of getting into like ath athletics or some kind of basketball baseball football whatever it is that's what the options are that's an alchemy that's on purpose you can cull a lot of people you can depopulate an entire community of people by locking them into crime by locking them into drugs psychologically destroying them and their with their families that that's going to destroy the family it's going to destroy the culture it's going to destroy the community it's going to destroy the core it's going to affect their relationship with the history their ancestors going to affect their relationship with time and the moment it's going to affect their their entire future and the future generations time frames Everything is affected by the alchemy of locking you into that world. Everything. So when you have that 
this is this is the the alchemy of or, or part of the alchemy of the fiat currency system the fiat currency system sets this up and then when the defense mechanism to revealing this is to say well no this is this is affecting everybody this doesn't have any focus on melanated people or I mean, look at it it's affecting everybody this is the point that they're at right now so they have to install that defense mechanism in order to hide the reality of redlining in order to hide the reality of the alchemy behind slavery in our uh, modern slavery because modern slavery today is mostly psychological it's a different kind of slavery than ancient slavery i mean ancient slavery was still psychological but today's version of it is like an updated version it's like this crazy um technological alchemical slavery you know it's it's really this mind control program that goes deep um, so you have all these systems that are out there that maintain your lack of ability to challenge this system and when you're you're so locked into the vulnerable state of relying or being codependent on the system just as a child would be codependent on a parent you're you're not allowing yourself to go into the soul you're not allowing yourself to go into the higher mind and then the side effect to that is escapism so since the consciousness of people has been raising over time more rapidly recently in recent times um, more forms of escapism need to be out there so this is where the mainstream media comes in. This is where Hollywood and movies come in. This is where video games come in. This is where the television comes in. This is where uh, TYT or alternative news comes in. This is where conspiracy theories come in. This is where social media comes in. This is where Alex Jones comes in. This is where David Icke comes in. Russell Brand, uh, activists, Hollywood merging with politics. Uh, Donald Trump being your president now. This is where late night talk shows come in and start only talking about politics, pretty much. That's all that but when before it was just like Johnny Carson talking to actors about whatever, one night at a time. Now you have a whole slew of late night talk show hosts and their main thing is just to dog Trump, which is just talking about only politics. Every joke is based upon mind control programming you. No different than uh, the mind control programming you of, tr of triggering little parts of the mind control, like how they are always mentioning, uh, like Bill Cosby, or always putting jokes on, you know, certain people. It's these little things that really matter. Like they make just like they choose particular stories to put on the mainstream news. Well, they choose particular jokes to put on late night talk shows, to put on these TV shows. It's no different. If you start analyzing the particular jokes, the repetitive jokes that are on there, you will start to see the alchemy of that system and mirror it, see the mirror image of the mainstream mechanism as a whole. You will start to see this. So I tapped on Alex Jones, uh, a little bit on TYT. TYT is another form of it. It, it, it. When you look at Alex Jones and TYT, you're looking at another Hegelian dialectic, no different than Democrats and Republicans. It's just a little bit more complex. So you have TYT that puts this pompous perspective out there as if it's the all-knowing because simply because it's not mainstream and they talk about fringe political information but really they're not talking about shit but the, you believe they are talking about something because they back people like bernie sanders so they create another belief system for you and all the thing they need to do is put some shitty ass egotistical piece of shit like jank uger on there and some you know attractive women on there to suck you in attractive intelligent women and you're done they they, they lock you down 
So he bullies people with his intellect and his ego. So he bully barrels over the majority of the women because the women are are beat down by this patriarchal system. So they just submit to whatever giant ego is out there. They just submit on on the whole, like generally speaking, on the whole, the submission mentality is really active in a lot of women these days. So this is why, you know, people like Jank work on not only women, but even men who are just completely just so fucking soft, just have no power, have no spine, have no sense of self. They just believe in whatever this system puts out there. So he represents that. And then you have the over-sexualized mentality and the, um, the dead thought process of the men who are just, you know, attracted to the attractiveness of the women. And then the intelligence at the same time is the, is the boot. So this is the alchemy of TYT. And just like Alex Jones locks you into his form of consciousness with um, in the emotional body and playing on. <laughs> TYT locks you in with uh, the softer version of, you know, this is intellect. We, we no different than like a, an English accent. You know, we're talking about Bernie Sanders. Bernie Sanders is the future of America. It makes you believe in this stuff because of the style. This is the alchemy of this system. And ultimately, you find yourself in Hegelian dialectic. I choose this or I choose the other. And they play that role. Yeah. What are we going to do? All right, fine. We'll talk about Alex Jones hopefully one last time. I couldn't resist. This is a clip from actually a couple of months ago. He was talking about Donald Trump and why he supports him. I ran across it. I had to share it with you guys. You know why I'm sharing it? Because I just, if you're one of those guys who supports Alex Jones, just know what you're supporting. Just watch this clip, okay? It's in its full context. Uh, and then if you still like the guy, go, God bless your heart. No problem. Have at it, Hoss. I, I just want you to know which side you're on, and then we'll be clear about it and we'll move forward, okay? <clears throat> so. As long as you're locked up in the roles being played through you by them, you're never ever going to be able to make any moves for yourself. Because by locking you into that focus is the escapism alchemy. And as long as you continue to vest your conscious experience into the alchemy of a parasitic consciousness based upon escapism there's nothing that you can really do because you are not you in the first place you are built up of something else the parasite who you think you are your thoughts your your thoughts itself are not your own They've been seeded, not only into your experience, but the generations before you and the generations coming up. This is what the Disney programming is and so on and so forth. So much so they, they even seed your dreams. This is what all this music is, this uh, subliminal programming, Hollywood programming. That's for your dreams. Why do you think these actors get paid millions and millions of dollars to keep their mouths shut athletes millions and millions of dollars to keep their mouths shut politicians under the table getting paid millions and millions of dollars in handouts from all of these corporations just like doctors getting paid millions and millions of dollars to push these prescription drugs on you to keep you sick to keep you buying their product. No different than these gangsters, these, these hustlers. These are some pirates. They need you. They need to keep you sick. They need to keep you like an addict, addict wanting more. Keep coming back. These are the biggest hustlers 
in the world, the biggest gangsters in the world is the system itself. The, the most gangster ass move that was put out there was Barack Obama at one time in one form, in one style. Another gangster ass move was 9-11. These are some gangsters of the highest form, psychological gangsters, spiritual gangsters. They make you not only hate yourself, but love their experience. That's some gangster ass shit. And not only love the experience, but you defend that experience. That's some gangster alchemy right there. And we don't even know it exists because it's so much a part of our experience and we're so locked into the the the, the shallow versions of what's going on. <laughs> a lot of the times we defend it or spend the majority of our time escaping from it. So I'll end it with this in the the other escape world because i mentioned alex jones tyt the conspiracy world alternative news people escape in mainstream news and i didn't even really go into that i didn't really need to but this is why people turn on the television people in my family and still do this they you know focus on the local news because it's comfortable it's uh it's a safe zone in a sense you're kind of informed about something it's the vibrations of that television it's the vibration of that information the tone of their voices speaking the 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 uh the information itself the style of it they jump from murder they jump from there to arson and then they jump to a an article about um some kind of you know happy moment you know, oh, this firefighter saved this or this civilian saved this person. And then back down to rape and then into, um, you know, a national disaster or a political thing. They jump. It's This is an alchemy. The local news is a definite alchemy. I've mentioned this in a number of videos, but you know this. So what that does is it makes you comfortable because... Just like the, the alchemy of dystopian movies does, you say to yourself, well, at least I'm not that bad. I'm glad that it's it's kind of okay. It's, it's not affecting me right now until it does affect you. But the majority of people are saying, well, it's, it's not affecting me. I just hope things get better. Hope, just keep hope. No different than Barack Obama. Hope, 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 hope. Believe, believe, believe. We, 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 we. Nah. That is the alchemy itself. And when you've been doing that for decades, for centuries when you go through the generations, when you've been listening to the local news every day for decades, it becomes a part of you. No different than politics. When you've been doing that for decades and generations, it becomes a part of you. And then it becomes a form of escapism, subconscious escapism, at least. When people are aware of this shit, when they are aware of the corruption of the local news, that's when it becomes conscious escapism. Because <laughs> you're like, I know this is full of shit. I know this is, but I'm going to keep doing it anyway. So... It's nothing really wrong with it. You know, people are medicating themselves in all kinds of ways and that they get through it in their own way, in their own time. And the system banks on this shit. So it'll constantly put out there these mechanisms to have you escape. So video games is a big one. Um you know, Tinder is a big one, like the marriage and reproduction thing, like all these uh, dating websites. Tinder is a, a big one. Pornography is a big one. Like these are all forms of escapism. But something like, uh, what is it? Um, something as quick, as streamlined as Tinder in, in form of relationships 
that is a direct link to the marriage and reproduction program, escapism, mechanism, and using people like prescription drugs pretty much. It's like, oh, swipe, 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 onto the next thing, onto the next thing, onto the next thing. Nobody's really doing any work. They're not working on themselves. Nothing is happening. Everything is externalized. And then when you actually meet people based upon a Tinder profile, which is nothing, and then it doesn't work out, who's, whose fault is it? Oh, it's that product. Oh, we, we didn't match up. The chemistry wasn't there. You know why the chemistry wasn't there? Because you yourself have no fucking chemistry. You don't have any chemistry with yourself. How the fuck are you going to have chemistry with somebody else? But as long as you keep externalizing your reality, you'll just keep looking for somebody with kindergarten chemistry. That's what it is. Tinder is kindergarten chemistry. Social media mechanisms that lock you into um, this shallow form of who and what you are is kindergarten chemistry. It's kindergarten alchemy. So they're basically de-evolving as, lo- as well as depopulating people. De-evolution. This is what technology is doing and so on and so forth. This is how they can suck you into transhumanism and whatever other belief systems like heliocentrism that they put out there. Or whatever kind of simulation theory that they're going to put out there to usher in the alien agenda or this new form of human history or whatever that's coming out because that's coming down the line they're just biding their time over and over again continually distracting you bouncing between distracting and programming you'll get just like the local news the overall timeline of this control grid is to you know give you some of this information take away this information program you condition you scare the shit out of you trigger your emotional body this time Uh, Lock you into this. Pull a false flag. Do this. You know, get these actors talking about this. Get this conspiracy talking about this. You know, put Harvey Weinstein out there and, you know, drag him, tar and feather him through the through the 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 mainstream media. But don't talk about Pizzagate. Don't talk about the pedophilia rings underneath Hollywood, underneath the Vatican underneath the white house don't talk about any of that stuff just get a patsy out there talk about one person and drag that storyline out as long as you can in order to hold the dogs off from attacking the entire system so put your late night talk show defenders out there. Put people like Oprah and Ellen out there to stand their ground and talk about how bad this one individual is. Buy us some weeks. Buy us some months. Buy us some years by focusing on what we tell you to focus on. Get out there and do your job, Ellen. Get out there and do your job, Susan Sarandon. Get out there and do your job, Stephen Colbert, Bill Maher. Protect this sandcastle because people are too informed and they're starting to tear it down. And we need them distracted. We need them escaping. These are all different forms of escapism. People like that. No different than, you know, having the television on 24-7. It's comfortable. You're used to it. So that's a form of a, a subconscious escapism. So conscious escapism, and, you know, that's relative at the same time, too, the, the whole whether you're conscious of it or not, because a lot of the time people are just like, if they're still doing it, then they're not really conscious that they're doing They're not cognizant that they're doing it. They, they can't really see how or why they're doing it. So... They're not really conscious of it. It's still like subconscious. But there are definitely people out there who know exactly what the local news is doing, yet will keep the television on and the local news on 24-7. Look at like going to hospitals, all, all the news. That's on purpose. So the last thing 
that I wanted to reference in this video is flat earth escapism to try to make it more, uh, cause I led up to it and this is an example of everything that I said is just an example of the style of information, the style of approach, excuse me. What it does is something like flat earth, it creates a rally point and rally points are very attractive no different than like false flag events they're very attractive you have to talk you have to address this shit the thing is it's attracting people at their level of consciousness and as long as you attract enough people at their level of consciousness and the people who are attracted to that experience are not actively engaged in the expansion of their consciousness, meaning that they need something to hold on to. They're still locking themselves into the conscious forms of escapism, like needing a flat earth community, needing a new age community, needing an Alex Jones a uh, guard dog out there to be barking at the globalists in hopes or uh, as a as a mouthpiece for the patriots who are defending the western civilization you need uh, a mouthpiece like Jink Uger in the alternative news to exist when you have just escaped the mind control of the mainstream media so is, these are the layers and this is very relevant for a lot of people. I know because I went through this and I know other people have. You break the codes of the mainstream media when you start looking at stuff like 9-11. Then you break the codes of TYT when you start to see their limitations and what they're really telling you and what they're not telling you. Then you go into somebody like Alex Jones and you see all this other information. It's not very linear, but it you know just... For an example, this is a lot of how it goes. Then you move to Alex Jones, and he starts to make a lot of sense. Then you start to see his limitations. Then you move into somebody, it might be at the same time as Alex Jones, like David Icke. And he starts talking about consciousness and, you know, the people and reptilians and interdimensional whatever, reptilians and so on and so forth. And, but he's talking about some positive information, too. So you move there, and then you start to say, well, something's missing here. So then you move into, like, a new age kind of mentality. And you start researching what the new age is all about. And you're like, oh, well, this feels really good. Like, this is all about consciousness. This is all about, you know, the the stuff that we should all be talking about. And then what happens is it creates another core. And if you don't break that core... You'll be trapped in that system. So the core of Alex Jones, for a lot of people that attracts a lot of people, is that you think that he has integrity. You think that he's all about real change. But when you start to observe his limitations and what he's for, what he's really about, not only what he's saying out of his mouth, but when you start to analyze a lot of the stuff that he's not talking about, then you see more about who he is. Same thing goes for the New Age community and David Icke and Russell Brand and anybody else that they put out there for you. The New Age community puts out this atmosphere of this is all wonderful. This is all information. This is all stuff that we need to be knowing about. This is beautiful. And they have an entire community based upon it. You believe. You create a belief system around that. You create another version of yourself. You stop doing a lot of the things that the system in like the new age mentality tells you is wrong and it is wrong a lot of those self-destructive mechanisms of the mainstream media and all that other stuff it's wrong so it's, it's just locking you further and further and further at the same time you have people like oprah and ancient aliens coddling and ushering in a mainstream version of the new age mentality seeding people a lot of people go into the new age community because they've been 
seeded, they've been triggered by something like Ancient Aliens and having David Wilcock on Ancient Aliens so that it immediately shoots people straight into the New Age community. Now they start they enveloping themselves with the secret information. Oh, so David Wilcock is on Ancient Aliens. He can only talk about so much. He can only do so much. He can only release so much information. He can't talk about everything on the History Channel. So I'm going to research David Wilcock on my own. Ooh, he's talking about the secret space program. He's talking about extraterrestrials. This stuff must be real. He's very intelligent. He's talking with very intelligent people. This is my new belief system. Boom. You created a whole new community based upon a new form of belief system. And what keeps it afloat is all of the other real stuff. Like just because the new age community adopts like the understanding of crystal energy or the chakras, or so on and so forth. They didn't invent that shit. They didn't invent crystals. They didn't invent the observations of chakras. They just co-opted that shit and created a, a mentality around it. So just because it's there doesn't mean it's all bad. So you got to get all the stuff out of there, get the meaning, and spit out the bones, for <laughs> lack of a better terminology. But literally, that's what it is. If you start chewing on those bones, you're going to break your teeth. You're going to try to like, you're not going to be able to digest it. And eventually those bones could probably kill you. If you, if you keep, if you fill your stomach up with a lot of those bones, you'll be full of shit and you'll die because you'll be weighed down by the mind control programs that were designed to weigh you down. That's what that whole community is about. To keep you there. And you feel full. But you're not full. Your stomach is just full of bones. There's no nutrients there. The longer you stay in there. You're you're just going to be filling yourself with bones. So in order to maintain this world. And this mentality. That's, that world has to continually add to the secrecy, add to the future part of that timeline and say, well, you know, aliens, the good guys are coming. The aliens are coming. Um, things are changing for the better. Oprah has her own network and she's speaking with Eckhart Tolle. Ellen is friends with Oprah. Ellen has, she's talking about this and that. And then what it's doing, it's co-opting the mainstream to make you believe in it. That's the design to sell you in to this new form of reality. And then they can do something big like a false flag of an alien agenda if they needed to. But if they can just bluff it into your reality for the rest of your life, then they don't really need to do it. They can make $20, million, $20 trillion off of bluffing your ass. They will. They'll just keep building that pot up. So that's what the system is doing. And the new age is at the head of this shit. This is where the spiritual escapism comes in. So you, everything I've been explaining before, and shout out to Danielle, who just recently did a video about this, um, talking about spiritual escape, which we just really mentioned, didn't really go into it. I'm talking about spiritual escapism, but um, it's so important to address this information because it's kind of like a poison that's sweet it's a sweet poison you have poison that people can smell it and they'll put it down this is stuff like tyt and even alex jones and especially the mainstream media they smell it smells like shit smells like it's gonna kill them if they have enough of themselves in themselves They'll put that shit down. Some people will drink it up. They built their whole immune system or their whole body is built up of poison. So they need to drink poison to maintain and even kill in their poisonous bodies. Some people need that until they don't need it anymore. And in order to break those codes, very painful. So this is, you know, another version of breaking the codes of the system as a whole. So anyway, you have. The new age, you have the poison that is sweet and people drink it. And it's a 
it's it's a sweetness that exists over time. It's a sweetness that takes you out in the long run. And people are just drinking it, drinking it, drinking it because it's so sweet, so wonderful. You're learning something from that sweetness is like activating neurons and you're, you're becoming a better person in a sense, but you're not really turning it on. It's like sitting in that library. You become a, a, a zombie in the library because you're still externalizing your reality based upon the poison. Just because it's sweet doesn't mean it's not poison. So get the sweetness out of that and get spit that poison out and move on. This is what's happening in the flat earth so-called community. People get this sweetness of truth and information about, you know, NASA lying and the earth, you know, being created, having a, some creative intelligence connecting you with some kind of spiritual energy that you have a meaning and a purpose. It's very sweet. But if you keep chewing on that bone, it's not sweet anymore because now you have work to do. It takes a lot of energy to spit those bones out. To regurgitate those bones that are in your stomach that you've already swallowed. Because you're, you feel full. You have this sense of fullness that is um, a part of you now. But it's literally going to kill you over time. So what Flat Earth does and what's happening right now is that shills or not, and I've been calling calling up Mark and Patricia since the beginning, since you know, two years ago. I never felt any kind of way positive about them. They they started to you know come at me in the beginning and comments. Not they, not, I don't really Mark, but Patricia in the beginning, which you know, made my antennas go up. I'm like, wait a second, I'm just a little shit nothing YouTuber out here just telling my perspective. Like, where are you coming from? What are you trying to do? So it made me look with another eye about what was going on. And then things just started to make sense over time. So what happens is in the shill version of Flat Earth is that sweetness, no different than the New Age community, They've packaged it for the mainstream. And then the defense mechanism for that is to say, well, all good, all publicity is good publicity. You know, it's just about flat earth. When flat earth goes mainstream, everything is going to change. Okay. Is that guaranteed? Is that talking about what flat earth actually means in reference to the how and the why? Hell no. It's a kindergarten approach to an ancestral problem. It's a kindergarten approach to something that is ancient, to an alchemy that exists largely outside of even our own perspectives right now, our own timelines right now. So if you approach a nonlinear timeline with a linear time code or a linear ingredient like I was talking about alchemy before it's going to kill it it's going to get lost it'll get consumed the chaos of this system is nonlinear and it will consume any kind of linear approach this is how the system is activating the divine feminine essence by putting the facade of a patriarchal program, a masculine program of linear mentalities, it uses the masculine cloak, but it's actually founded in the nonlinear, the feminine alchemy. So this is how it protects itself. You attack it with masculine linear approaches, it's not going to do anything because it'll just activate its, its chaos. If you activate it with chaos... It's not going to do anything because it'll hit you with linear interpretations and demonize you. It'll make you wrong. It'll make you bad. This is how they look down upon you. This is the same shit that Nathan did with Martin in defense of Patricia and Mark. Oh, how dare you? How dare you? 
These are royal, royal flat earthers. They've been out here doing things for years. How dare you approach them with such nonsense and say one word about the actual information, the actual allegations in in those storylines of what's being presented they just hit you with the you're ridiculous you this is just poppycock poppycock i tell you these are real people human beings how dare you attack such normal wonderful people what do you mean they're not who they say they are this is just nonsense. It's nonsense, I tell you. Nonsense. Get the fuck out of here with that. You can research all the conspiracies, all the stuff in the world about how all this, everything is a fucking lie. Or you're presented with some evidence about, or some information about, you know, what, oh, no, no way. No way. This is, not, this is impossible. shit. <laughs> Get the hell out of here with that. So that's an example of how the system plays itself or plays you. You hit it with chaos. You hit it with fire. You hit it with power. You hit it with art. It'll counteract you with classical music. Oh, this is, this is not classical. This is just, what is this? Soul R&B this, ah, oh, this is just crazy music. The real music is classical. It's classical. You hit them with classical music or you hit them with information, linear terminology, and say, oh, no. It's all about flat earth. We need to just focus on this, okay? The bigger picture. Everything is a lie. Everything is chaos. Everything is this. What do you mean? We need to focus on the human story and we need to focus on healing the wounds of white supremacy and racism and the histories of the world and all. No, it's only about everything that's a lie, that everything is chaotic. That's how this system plays and it's playing through individual people. This is what I've been noticing for the last two years, actually longer than that. Since I started to analyze my reality from a different perspective, that alchemy that I just explained right now, that bouncing back and forth between the left and the right hemisphere, is existing not only in the collective form of alchemy, but in the individuals. You know, you, you hit this with people. Some people bounce back and forth between, you know, attack mode and the emotional body. So you can see this with a lot of people, especially people who have giant you know, artificial egos. They attack you. They come on the offensive. As soon as you hit them with some real shit, they become the victim. Oh, no. What are you doing? How dare you? I would never do such a thing. Did you hear yourself two seconds ago? This is how it's that back and forthness. They don't... And they can't really see it because they're not who they are. This is what I've been seeing. This is how I've been seeing this, this program works. It exists in people and the collective as a whole. It's how that poison gets masked You in sugar. Sweet and sour. It's basically what it is. Sweet and sour. Sweet and sour poison. That sour is chaotic, but... It does something like you like it, like cat, cayenne pepper, like it's a pep, like you need something that's good. It balances out the entire meal. But if the meal is cooked by a poisonous chef, you're fucked. You're done. Cash in your chips. Call it a day. If you're not making your own meals, you're poisoning yourself. And there's people, real people who cook real food. You can, you can eat with them. We can hang out and do that whole thing. But the majority of people right now have not done the work. And they're making meals that are anchored in poison. Wrapping flat earth, the barbecue plate of flat earth, 
in a mainstream rapper and selling it to people just because any publicity is good publicity is an obvious poison to me and many other people because you're not looking at everything else you're you're wrapping it in a linear mentality and cashing all your chips in just saying oh this is it i hope i pray this is it i'm done good job we did it you're talking about something else you're a threat you're divisive you're you're this you're that all right good luck with that so that's pretty much what i wanted to share with this video um <clears throat> keep an eye out for the way these systems are being built and that'll open the door start opening the doors to how and why things are the way they are not just what things are alex jones talks about what's going on excuse me with you know the globalists and in his perspective of a patriot and all that other stuff and his dream is like you said in that video that you know have this life extension technology well here's an, there's another thing that ties into transhumanism and that whole mentality because that's the main system of the so-called globalists they want to have this live forever mentality so there's another clue for alex jones Another clue, obviously, is him talking about, I want to go off world. Like, I want to be in space. Like, what the fuck are you talking about? Why are we not talking about it here? It's no different than NASA putting trillions of dollars into space. And Earth is fucked up. So, I mean, this stuff is very obvious over time. Obvious with um, TYT. It's obvious with the mainstream. It's not so obvious with the New Age. And it's not so obvious with Flat Earth. But from my own observation, it's very much obvious now. Having gone through that shit. Going through the Flat Earth information stream. And seeing how it's progressed from the, the modern version of it until now. It's no different than the New Age community. It's the same thing. It has the same effect. And like I said in previous videos, it's really uh, boiling down to the co-optability of it. The New Age is already being co-opted. Ancient Aliens is on the History Channel. David Wilcock is on Ancient Aliens. The alien agenda is already out there. Area 51. It's in Hollywood. They're seeding your mind. They're they're dorm they're they're making people complacent, dormant, apathetic with the new age thought process. That's exactly where they need people to be to usher in this artificial version of polar shifting this experience, but it's still going to be underneath the boot of the system itself. So be, like I said before, they used to control you with fear. Now they're going to try to control you with love. And they say, oh, we need to just come together, create all this unity, come together as one, create a United Nations government, destroy all the borders, destroy all the culture, destroy all. This is going to be for the benefit of the system. And then people in the New Age community are going to say, oh, thank you. Oh, I feel so I feel so validated. Because the aliens are finally here. We're finally unifying. But they're still in control. And one of the main mechanisms that they could use to uh, instigate that unity is something like Flat Earth. A new version. So what it does, a new version of your experience. So what it does is creates this opportunity to make another school system. And it creates the opportunity to make more villains. Just like Harvey Weinstein out there, they could start getting certain people in NASA. Not NASA itself. Certain people in NASA. The Nazis in NASA. Prosecute them. Don't go after NASA. Go after the people in NASA. Because it's the bad apples. Not the system itself. And then that's how they usher in the next agenda.
now they can have a NASA program from a flat earth perspective or whatever it is they're going to do. Just like, or, or from an alien perspective or a quantum physics perspective, quantum theory perspective. And they can buy another 5, 10, 15, 20, 100 years of your focus, of your beliefs. This time with a sweeter poison. The poison of fear is very pun- pungent. Like it, it hits you. You know it. But it was so strong that people just couldn't do anything about it. So they just spent their entire time escaping. But now people are like, man, fuck this poison. Fuck these escapism mechanisms that are out here. We need to start addressing this stuff. If you make it out of those comfort grids. Once you get comfortable in the new age, you're not going to start doing that. You're just going to wait on the system to do something for you. Even if you get comfortable in the flat earth, you're not going to really do anything. You're going to pride yourself in flat versus globe. And then that's it. You did your job. That's not your job. Because you're not really changing anybody. You're planting seeds. But ultimately, the people themselves are only going to be able to change themselves. And they plant, they change themselves with the seeds you have planted. But there's more to it. That's a linear approach. Planting seeds is still linear. But it's a form of alchemy. It's nothing wrong with it. People need that. But if you build an entire community about around that, you're done. You're dead already. It's it's one one dimensional. And an inter and largely multi-dimensional process that's going on here. This is the nonlinear perspective I was talking about. And what it all boils down to as long as you're Focusing on the escapism as long as you are priding yourself in one version of reality, you're not really going to activate the left and the right hemisphere, like poetically, of your experience. The soul, the mind, the body, the relationship, the alchemy between all of them. So that's basically what I had for this video. Um, yeah, it's just aside from uh, the belief systems and the belief systems are very linear. The, the, the escape mechanisms, the escapism is harder to pinpoint because it's, it's pretty much nonlinear a lot of the times because it's a holistic approach. You don't even know you're doing it a lot of the times. Like when I was in the new age community, uh, it never really consumed me, but when I was in there, I never knew I was in there. I thought that was, you know, life. That was it. Same can be said for a lot of flat earth circles. Like, that's life. That's it. It's just about this. But, you know, there are people who have a a larger scope, a larger perspective on what's going on and are definitely chatteling the movements in a particular direction, no different than the linear storylines that come through local news in the mainstream media. You go one news article at a time, one day at a time. But what is the entire mechanism of the mainstream doing over years, decades, centuries, generations? That's a different style. It's a different story. It's the same in many ways, but it's different when you zoom out. So what people, what I'm seeing people are doing right now when they're questioning people like Mark and Patricia in the, in the flat earth is that they're zooming out a little bit and seeing what's really going on. You know, what are we really doing here? What's, what's the uh, so-called end game? Because it's, it's just about change right now. We're still just kind of like destroying the foundation of this artificial empire. That could take generations. So if you're already, you know, you know, telling people we need to start building again when you're still destroying foundations, you're still evening out the plot or the uh, 
the what, what's the name? Is that the name for the plot? The slab. That's what it is. The slab. <laughs> If you haven't balanced, leveled out that slab, you can't level out the slab if you haven't broken down all the sandcastle that's on top of it. You haven't gone to the foundation. If you hadn't gone down there and then realize, you know, what, what's going on, you know, you're just going to be playing another game, hoping that it gets better. It's deeper than that, though, so... That's what I have for this video. Thank you for joining me. And uh, until next time, from all my relations, peace, love, and harmony. There's something going on in this house, Professor. I'm not crazy! Ah!